talk about something now that many people don't like to talk about <laughs> in public, irritable bowel syndrome. And actually, you should because 15% of us will suffer from this at least once in our lifetime. And might not even know it. So we brought in Dr. Holly Clark here. She is a specialist from Utah Gastroenterology. Did I say that you right? You did. <laughs> Good did. job. Well, thank Excellent. you so much for joining us. Thanks now, for having Nisha me. said 15% are affected by this. 15% of women at some time during their lives are affected by symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. So it's really common and it accounts for about mm, 80-85% of my clinic visits. More very, common, very common in women than men? Absolutely. Why, Absolutely. Is, why is that? That's a very good question and I don't know if we know the answer to that. But mm. there are several digestive diseases that are much more common in women and of those, the ones I see most frequently are problems with constipation and irritable bowel syndrome. I think that many women can relate to well, Those is it problems. babies? Do they mess it all up in there somehow? Is it before, usually before you have a baby or after? <laughs> it's usually most active during the reproductive years. Mm. So most women who come down with irritable bowel syndrome will do so, do so maybe in college years, as a teenager even. And then the disease course typically waxes and wanes through the reproductive years. And fortunately, it most often burns out around menopause. How is it diagnosed? It's a diagnosis that should be made by a healthcare professional. Um, the symptoms are many. And I asked before I came on the air if it's okay to say things like diarrhea and gas on the air. And Put I was it told out there. Yes. So here we go. <laughs> it is what it is. Symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome include uh, diarrhea, constipation, gas, bloating. And in most women, it's a constellation of these symptoms. So some women may, at some points during the course of their disease, have more diarrhea and gas. Some have more constipation and bloating. And the disease can change as time goes on. That is, when your disease starts out, you might have more diarrhea. Then two years later, you may have more diarrhea and constipation kind of alternating back and forth. So um, I think your question was, how is the diagnosis made? Mm -hmm. um, the diagnosis should be made by a healthcare pr practitioner who takes a very good, thorough history, listens to your symptoms, maybe rules some other conditions out if you have any alarm symptoms like blood in the stool or weight loss. Those are things that shouldn't happen with irritable bowel syndrome. Could you see with an x-ray or something like that? No, and I'm glad you bring that up because that's a very, very frustrating problem for people. For instance, if you have bad irritable bowel syndrome, terrible pain, diarrhea, you go to the emergency department with your symptoms and you have a CAT scan mm -hmm. and it's normal. And you have blood tests and they're all normal. And you're, you're told, pain. Oh, must be in your head. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. what's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so irritable bowel syndrome is a problem with the way the gut functions. And you're not going to see function on a CT scan or even a colonoscopy. Your colonoscopy will look normal. And so it's a, a diagnosis that is made by listening to people's symptoms and ruling other conditions out. So irritable just means unsettled? Irritable means that your gut is behaving badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by and that, I mean... I don't want it to. Yeah. Well, you mentioned these five tips. You have five tips that we can do to help out if we do have this. Now, mm -hmm. the very first one, you said, remember that your digest di digestive tract is a barometer for your overall well-being. That is, you won't have a happy and healthy digestive system without healthy body and mind. Yeah, and I really love to remind my patients of that fact. The gastrointestinal tract is a barometer of overall well-being. So if you're not eating well, if you're not sleeping, if you're stressed out, you're going to feel that in your gut. Your gut is not going to function optimally if you're not taking care of yourself. Well, and if you're not happy in the bathroom, you're not happy. No. Well, you got it. No. You got it. Things aren't moving well. Just nothing, nothing yeah. is going and well. And along yeah. that note, Nisha, avoid foods that will make your symptoms worse. What would those typically be? <laughs> oh, things like um, greasy, fatty food. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have symptoms after overeating in a restaurant. Um, things like chocolate, food additives, would red artificial meat sweeteners. Things? For some people, I mean, I think the key is that um, different things are triggers for different people. And the key is figuring out what your triggers are and then avoiding those things. Um, for instance, people will come to my clinic and they'll say, you know, every time I eat fried chicken and potato chips, mm -hmm. I get a gut ache. It's like, well, you know, guess what? Maybe you should stop doing that. <laughs> Let's put a couple more of those helpful tips on the screen. Um, and also, if 
you can read those right there. But if you have more questions, go to utahgastro.com. Um, they are so wonderful there, and they will talk you through this. Um, that's their website, and you can get all their information right there, and we'll link you from ours. Go to abc4.com and click on Good Things Utah, but a couple different locations and a couple amazing doctors. This just might be the one that you see if you suffer Thank from you. IBS. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Such My good pleasure. information.